Hello everybody, and welcome to the Festival of Lights, Infinite Lights. I'm happy to be with you today. My name is Tal Perez, and today we're going to talk about uh, something that every, everybody heard about. Even you can, if you walk in the streets of LA, sometimes you see that in, on billboards and all, all many, all kind of places, and it says Tikkun Olam. Tikkun Olam in English means reparation of the world. So today, together, we're going to try to understand this notion of Tikkun Olam. Uh, in, order, in order to understand that, we're going to use, as a, as a material, we're going to use the introduction of the Baal Sulam on the Sefer Azor HaKadosh. There, the Baal Sulam is asking many questions. Among them, and this is the one we're going to, we're going to focus on, is asking about the creation, the creation of human, humankind. As Nachman it explains, he said that every soul, every soul, every, every Jewish soul, is called Chelek Eloka Mimal, meaning every soul is a part of God. And Nachmanid, to explain, it says Mamash, meaning it's not a metaphor or an, an image. No, 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 no. We, every neshama of the Jewish people is really as a part of the divine. And this is something that we have to understand, how it's possible that there is a part of the divine that was separated from him. How can you separate a part, take a piece apart of the divine? How does that, that work? Another question is, when it says that God created the world, He created it, yesh me'ayin, meaning the world was created on creating something from nothing. Yesh, meaning the, the existence, me'ayin, ayin is the absence, is the, is the non, non exist, non-existence. So how, so what is this concept of God creating something that do not exist? What is the question? The question is, how can we define there is something that do not exist within the Creator, within Borei Olam? In order to understand the question, I would like to give you an example. Imagine you have an artist. He is a painter, he is a drawer, whatever you want. He is an artist. Now, he is taking a piece of uh, a canva, or whatever what, material, and he is making his piece of art. He is drawing, he is using paint, colors, Pencils, whatever he's using. So can we say that this piece of art was not existing within the artist? Can we say that? Because what he put in the outside is just a reflection, is just a, 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 a potential that was utilized. He exploited his, his talent that was contained inside him, within him, and he externalized this content, this, this uh, uh, talent that he has. So when we see a paint made from an, by an artist, what are we seeing? We see, we are contemplating the, the materialization of his talent, what he was containing within himself. So the same with the Creator. How can we say, how can we tell that God created something that wasn't contained within him. As we know that the Creator is infinite and everything is possible for him as everything was already contained in it. So where is the new creation? What wasn't existing within the Creator, Borei Olam, that he created by doing, by creating the world or creating the universe or creating the humankind? That's something that we need to understand. And let's say that the, there is something that wasn't contained within the Creator. But what is that thing that, that wasn't existing that he, he created? So here, the, the, the Ravashlag is giving us the key to understand everything. And I have to share with you that this introduction of the Baal Sulam really changed my life, changed the way I'm looking at things. And uh, this, this is why it's so important for me to share it with you. This is something you're going to take with you with your life. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to have an impact on your entire 
journey, every step of your life, you're going to see, you're going to utilize this, you're going to change, you're going to help you. So says the Bala Sulam like this. Of course, everything was already contained in the Creator. Everything exists. There is only one thing that wasn't existing. God, Borei Olam, He is the one that He can, He has. He, everything is contained within. Him. There is only one thing that did not exist, and this is called Ratzon Lekabel, the will for a person to get something from himself. Because Hashem, what He's doing all the time, is always giving. He's only giving. He do not need anything from us, from anybody. So what he is doing all the time is always giving. As the 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 Arya Kadosh says that actually Hashem is all to me. Is 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 an infinite light that's rejoining the festival of infinite light. What is infinite light? Hashem was or or pashut pashut. What is pashut? Is simple, constant. Hashem is constantly giving. Everything that we are proceeding, everything that we what, that we see, everything that we get, is all given given by Hashem Barach. and constantly is the, the the divine light that is giving us what we have today. Everything we see, the light, the flowers, the trees, the animals, everything is what is the light that is going into the vessels. Because all the world is is composed by. Go, uh, orot, lights, and vessels. Orot vekelim. So the or is the from the giver, is from Hashem, and we are recepting, and all what we see, all the creation is actually the vessels where we are recepting this light. So, if Hashem is only, only giving, right? So what Hashem created is what? Is the Ratzon Lekabel, which is the egoism, the egoism, the, the fact, the feeling for a person to want to get something from himself, that feeling is not existing within the Creator. And he, want, he needed to create this. Why he needed to create this? Because if we want the Neshamot to exist and to be the, the reason of the world, the, the creation of the world, what do we need? We need something to separate the, this neshamot, this part, the divine part, from, from the Creator. How do we do that? How is it possible to separate something from, from, the, from, the, from the divine? How can we separate this? Are well, you going to use what? Scissors? Are you going to use hammers? What are you going to use? So what we're going to use is something that is opposite to the Creator, which is egoism. Because egoism, this is a notion, this is something that is not contained, do not exist with Hashem it Barach. So, in the spiritual world, the way to create a distance or a closeness between the two different pieces, two different objects, two different people, is through this. Through the what? The, the, the same being the, the, the same. Let's say, the more you are look alike, the more close you are to the, to the other object. So the less look alike, the more distance is created between the two objects. So if Hashem is only giving, and someone suddenly he has a will to get something from himself, that difference of nature is creating, is creating the distance between, the, between Hashem and the person. So that we ask, how is it possible to, to separate something from the divine? Is that Hashem created the, within the Neshamot, the Ratzon Lekabel, what we call the egoism, the will to get something from in myself. That difference created the distance from the divine who do not contain by any chance zero, zero percent of egoism. Yes, the fact that Neshama has this will of getting something from itself, so the egoism, that's what was able to create this separation and separate the Neshama, the soul, from the divine. So now we answer, we answer the question, how ah, it's possible the, to separate, that we said that the Neshamot 
are part of the divine, how it's possible to separate them, we answer that. But because God created in Neshamot, the egoism, the Ratzon Kabel, what you call the will to receive something for, for my own interest, and that's the distance that was created by this difference between people. Because even, even within friends, what is making people to be close to one another? Usually, if you go, you're going to look around your, 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 uh, your friends, your family, the, even at, uh, at work, the person you are, the, the, the closer you are to the people, is because you have more in common. The more you have in common, the more you're going to be close to these people. The less in common, the less, the, the, the far you're going to be. So, here, that's what, that's what the Baal Salam answered. The way the Neshamot, the souls, were separated is because God created, He added an ingredient, He added a nature within the, the Neshama, which is not contained into the Creator. And that's what created the distance between the two. So now we understood, we understood that. We will understand also what was created that wasn't contained to the Creator. Yesh me'ain. He created something that wasn't existing. That's what He created. He created the will to get something from, for a person, what we call the egoism. So what is the purpose of that? What's the idea of creating the people this way? So, that was needed. That was needed, why? Because Hashem created the world and all the creations was made for one purpose. As the, the Ramchal is bringing this, the, all the, all the, the Refashim explains that the reason God created the world and the humankind is because Hashem is Tov. Hashem is goodness, only goodness. And the only thing that He wants to do is to give. So in order for God to give to us, yes, and to make us enjoy, there is something that we need. Because pleasure, enjoyment, will, be, will, will, be, will take place only if there is a need. Only if there is a will. For example, if a person is not angry, he will not, he will not enjoy the food. If a person is not thirsty, he will not enjoy the drink. The more you want something, the more you will enjoy it. The more you are angry, the more you are going to enjoy the food. But if you already are satisfied, you had a, you had a dinner, you, have a, you had a meal, like five minutes ago and you ate, ben Poraz, you ate very well, they are going to bring you even the nicest steak. And but you are full, you're not going to be able to enjoy it. What is making, what is the recipe to, to enjoy something? The fact that you want it. The more you want it, the more you enjoy. The less you want it, the less you enjoy. So if God wants us to enjoy our life, if God wants us to enjoy the creation, what, does, that, what do we need in order to do that? So this is the Tikkun Olam. God was forced to create it. Yes, force meaning he was obligated. If he wanted us to enjoy, he needs to create, to create us with egoism. But egoism is not a good character trait. This is the opposite of the creator. And our goal is what? As the Torah says, tabo. You have to be close to God. You have to stick to him. And as we said before, in spirituality, to stick to a person, you have to look alike. The more you look alike, the closer you are. So what is the tikkun olam? The tikkun olam, actually what it is, is to fight the ego. You have to fight the egoism and to become an altruist like God is. So what, it, what does it mean to become an altruist? It means that everything we're going to do, it has not, it, it's not supposed to go to our direction. It has to go to the other direction. And that's all the purpose of the mitzvot. Because when a person is doing a mitzvah, l'shem shamay, because if a person, even a person that is doing a mitzvah, but he's doing it because he wants to get the reward out of it, yes, this is something that he's, this is from himself or for the others? Of course this is for himself, because he wants to reward. So even that mitzvah is not 100%. Because if you said all the reason, all the tikkun olam, all the reparation of the world is what? Is to, to fight the egoism. So everything I'm supposed to do in life is for the purpose of the others, not for myself. 
So, even for God, I'm doing a mitzvah, I have to do a mitzvah. For what purpose am I doing this mitzvah? I have to do this mitzvah because Hashem asked me to do it and I want Him to have, to have satisfaction out of, out of my actions. But how can I make God happy? By doing something that without, without His order, I would never do it. For example, I'm wearing tefillin. Who is going to wear tefillin without the commandment of the Torah? That we have to wear tefillin. Nobody will wear tefillin like taking a piece of uh, straps of leather and he will go wear, the, wear them every day just out of the blue like this. No. The fact we are doing the mitzvot is because God asked us to do them. And by doing the mitzvot, actually what is happening, we are supposed to fight to get used to do something that is not for our own interest, that is not for our own pleasure, that is not for our own benefit. We have to, do, we have to get used to do actions, to say words, to have thoughts, while not going into our direction, in, into our e egoism. The opposite, we have to do the actions, we have to say the words, we have to think the thought. Just for what? For the opposite direction, to somebody else. So, if that's the idea, Rabotai, my dear friends, and we call this the Tikkun Olam, we see we have different levels. The body represents the egoism. Because the body is the thing that God created in order for us to enjoy it. So all of the pulsions, all of the will, all of the, the, the appetite for pleasures, for anything that is toward the body, this is what we call the egoism. So our mission is to fight that. And you have to make the soul to take the direction. Because the soul, we say, is a part of God. And the soul, he is what he wants. He looks like God. So you have to make things for others, not for myself. And if I'm doing from others, what is going to happen is going to happen that slowly, slowly, the one who's going to take the direction of my person is going to be my spirit and not my body. So when a person, for example, is using his body for a commandment, for doing a mitzvah, for wearing tefillin, he's going to use my mouth for saying the bracha, for saying berkat amazon, whatever mitzvah I'm going to, whatever I'm going to use of my body, for the other, not for myself. What's going to happen? Slowly, slowly, our body is going to become holy. Because even our body at the end, we're going to get through the tikkun olam. Because when we'll, we will have, after Mashiach will come, without Hashem, soon and in our days, we're going to have the techiyat amitim, which is the, rest, the, the awakening of the dead. Why do we need the body? Why the body has to, why the body has to, to wake up? The body, we say, is something that is egoism, is flesh, is not part of the divine. So why do we need the body? Because even the body is going to become also the part of the neshama, meaning it's going to be also something that they're going to get through the tikkun and become spiritual. So what are we have to, supposed to do now? We're supposed, to, every time we do something, we have to ask ourselves, why am I doing this? Why am I saying this? Why am I thinking this? And every time check, that's going to be our GPS in life. Am I doing this for my own interest? Or am I doing this for the others? That's the difference between being spiritual and materialistic. Between being like an animal, because the body by itself is made out of flesh and blood, has nothing spiritual, nothing that is really elevated it's just if you take out the soul out of the body it's just a, a piece of meat yes so if we let our body to guide us to govern us to take the direction of our life we miss the point all the point is what is to have our soul to have our spirit to guide us to govern us and in order to make the the the, the test and check are we going in the right direction or not, we have to see are we more into the others and, and Hashem of course a part of the equation is the, is the one or am I doing this toward myself, am I interested more into myself, fulfilling my own, my own, my own uh, projects, fulfilling my own will, fulfilling my own pleasures 
or am I more into the divine? And by saying the divine, it means the other. Because being divine or, or the opposite is what is toward myself on the, or outside. If I'm outside, I'll more look like the divine. Because that's what we said, the, the distance is created by the differences. The less differences, the closer we are. The more differences, the farther we are. So that's the idea. That's the idea. And slowly, slowly, when a person will get used to do things, not for the, his own purpose, not for his own pleasures, not for his own will, yes, what's going to happen? Slowly, slowly, his, his materiality, his uh, animosity will go down. And when the animosity is going down, it's always like this. It's like a level. It's like a, a balance, like a weight. If you are pushing here, it's going up. Pushing here, it's going up. So the more you are within yourself egoist, you're going to be like this. That's the egoism. But if you're going to elevate your gift, gift of yourself toward the others, what's going to happen? The spirituality is going up. And automatically that level is going to go down. That's what we call the, the, the Tikkun Olam. And that's the main reason why God gave us the commandments is that that's the idea. We're going to do things that you do not have an interest out of it. You do it just because I ask you to do them. And by doing this, you're going to fulfill your purpose, which is the Tikkun Olam. Tikkun Olam actually is the egoism. You know, the Baal Salam is asking why there, are, there is so many troubles in, in, in the world. So much suffering, so much trouble, so much sickness, so much issues. And you know what he says? He says that if we already had the world to be in the, into the Tikkun Olam, which is no egoism, what would happen? It would happen that the entire humanity about 7 billion people in the world will all be focused into taking care of one individual. Because if there is no e egoism, everybody will think about the other. So if you have 7 billion people who care only about one another individual, it, there will be no famine, there will be no, no sickness, no issues, nothing. Why? Because everybody is taking care of the others. So all the pharma, all the scientists, all the doctors, they will all take care of the other people. Meaning, not thinking about how much money the treatment is going to bring. All the pharma industries, etc., etc. No, they will really, really take care. Making sure that there is no sickness. Making sure that every person on earth will be healthy and happy. And everybody will have enough to, uh, to eat. Everybody will be whatever he needs in order to live a happy life. He said, oh, actually, all the suffering that is coming to the world, that exists in the world, all the wars, all the, it's all because of egoism. If you remove egoism from the equation, the world would be Gan Eden. So that's what we say, Tikkun Olam. That's the one to be able to bring the Tikkun Olam sooner as possible because all the humanity depends on it as well. So when we will, Bezrat Hashem, soon, will be able to fix that egoism and, and be more altruist, altruist and thinking about the others all the time, that's going to bring Bezrat Hashem to Yeshua very, very soon and in our days. But what is very important, and that's what I say, that's going to, give, that's going to be the GPS of our life. Because every time we're going to want to say something, let's say you want to rebuke on a person. I want to rebuke on a person. He did something that is wrong. I have to ask myself, now I'm going to tell him something. The way that I'm going to say it, the moment I'm going to choose to, to tell him that, that's going to define the way the person will accept it or not. The way the person will feel by my rebuke. What's going to be the, 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 the reason I'm doing it, that's going to, going to make the other difference. If... I, I should ask myself, why do I want to give a rebuke to that person? Let's say my friend, my spouse, my children, whatever, whatever the person is, whoever the person is. Am I saying it because I want to help him? I want to elevate him? 
I want to help him, help him grow? Or am I saying this because I want to feel superior to him? I want to show him that I'm better than him. I want to show him that I know better than him. Everything is also about my own ego. So actually I come and I have an aspect of someone that comes to help him, but actually the feeling that has, the real feeling that I have inside, that I have inside, inside, is actually I want to show him that I'm bigger than him, that I'm all the, the greater than him. And that's actually ego. That's egoism. So you can have diff actions that looks like into the altruism, but actually this is the opposite. For example, there is a Mishnah in the tract of Kat Kiddushin, the Mishnah says that if normally the, the husband, the man, is the one to marry the woman, let's say, so how the, the person is getting married, is giving him something that has a certain value, <coughs> at least a pruta, and he will give that, usually today we do it with the, with the ring, you say, read me kudeshetli, you are sanctified to me with this ring, according to the laws of Moses and Israel. And by giving this, actually the the, the process of, of marriage is done. But the husband has to be the one to give to the, to the woman, to the wife. The Mishnah is bringing a case that is going the opposite. What is it? If the husband, let's say, he's a very important person, let's say a king or a prince or whatever, and actually the people who are enjoying the getting a pleasure out of giving to him a gift because of his importance. So it's like an honor to come to give a gift to the king, right? So let's say that the, that person, the, the husband is this kind of people and the woman who will give him, will give him the gift, right? The Mishnah says that the woman is considered married why? Because by giving to him, actually she enjoyed uh, something that has the most, at least the value of, of the puta. So you're going to ask me, but she didn't get anything. She's the one who gave. Yes, you gave. But by giving, you get a pleasure out of it. And the value of this pleasure is, just, is, the, is above the minimal value of the object that you have to get. So you see that you can give, but actually you are not giving, you are getting. Or you can get, but actually you are giving. So what's the idea behind it? The idea behind it is that the intention that we have is what making actually this to be an act of kindness or the opposite. Let's say I used to give this example that a kid is coming, one of our kids is coming, and daddy, daddy, look what I, what I, what I draw. And he show you something very ugly, okay? So you have no interest of getting it because you have no pleasure. This is not nice. You have nothing to do with this piece of paper. And you say, oh, this is so beautiful. Wow, this is amazing. And the kid actually is getting a pleasure out of it. So you are the one to get it, to get what he, the, the piece of paper. But who is really enjoying? The kid is enjoying so that's exactly what is important to know what is your intention. Am I giving in order to get? Or am I getting in order to give? Or am I giving in order to give really? Because many times you're going to have people come and give you a gift or smiling to you. But the smile is not, real, it's not a real smile. He's smiling to you or we are smiling to them because we need to ask a favor out of these people. We are giving a gift because we have an interest out of giving the gift. So actually when I'm giving the gift, I'm not giving, I'm taking. I'm taking, I'm not giving. So that's the same idea that we have to reach a certain level that when we are coming and doing a mitzvah and we say we are giving a gift to Hashem, we want to do something for Hashem. And Hashem at the end is giving us a reward. We have to be in a level that we get the reward from Hashem just because we know that Hashem would be happy to give us the reward. I don't know if you understand the level of pureness, that it's 100% altruism. Whatever we do is 100% clean out of interest. There is no egoism, there is no interest. Everything is pure kindness to give to the others. That's what we, we, we have to work on. And uh, that actually, this is called... Kedusha, 
or Tumah. Holiness is whatever you do in order to give outside. The opposite of holiness that we call Tumah, impurity, yes, the opposite of, of, sanity, of, of uh, sanity is when a person is taking something for himself. So the person that he is, is giving, yes, is giving, you are in the Kiddusha, we have in the holiness. If your thought is clear and clean, to really to give, you have no interest in it, nothing. The only purpose is to make the other person happy, to give to the other person. But at the moment that you mixing your own interest, and actually your action of giving is disguise, your intention actually is to take, it's all a, it's all a disguisement, that's actually you are taking and you are into the Tum'ah. Tum'ah is the impurity. Because that's the opposite of what God is asking us to do. That's the opposite of the reparation of the world. So the more you are into giving, yes, the more we are into the reparation of the world. And Rav Desla used to say, and we will end with this, he said, if you want to divide, to divide the world into two categories, it's not Sadiq, Rasha, good, bad, uh, 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 whatever. I forgot all the, the other differences. He says, if you want to divide the world in two, there is only two categories. Giver or taker. That's, that's, that's the two things. In everything, we can define it by these two categories. Am I giving, taking? Is it a giver? Is it a taker? And that's what we have to work on. To become, to share the light. Because the light, as we say, the divine has no, uh, no egoism. It's only kindness, only giving. So you want to share the divine light, what we have to do, always being into this movement of giving, always, all the time. To go, to give, to give, to give, to give. That's what we have to look for. And all the... Uh,